Hey everyone, this is Dino and today I'm going to do a review on this phone. This is the Blue Grand 5.5 HD. Now this was supposed to be an unboxing session, however I forgot the box at home so uh, this is going to be a review on the phone and my user experience with it. Okay. Uh, before I go into the review though, uh, I just wanted to say a, a quick shout out to Tony Hong from Pioneer Mobile. I mean, he was kind enough to send me the phone for review, so thanks a lot, Tony. I appreciate it. Okay, so this is the phone. As you can see, it's a big phone. It's a 5.5 inch phone, which is fairly common uh, these days. All right. On the right hand side of the phone you've got your power and your volume rocker. On the left side you've got no buttons. On the top you'll find your headphone jack and on the bottom your USB charging port. On the back you've got your camera and your flash. And on the front you will see the camera there and also the LED flash. Okay? Now the back of the phone is made out of aluminum metal which feels great. It feels like this is a premium phone and um, the front is covered with this glass that's really nice and um, I have no problems with fingerprints, so it doesn't really attract um, a lot of fingerprint when you're using it. So let me talk about the specs of the phone uh, real quick. All right, I'm going to read this out, so just bear with me. Okay, so the screen of the phone is 5.5 inches. It's an IPS LCD, and it's got a resolution of 1280 by 720, uh, 267 PPI. The camera on the back is 8 megapixel autofocus with an LED flash. The front camera is a 5 megapixel uh, shooter and it's got an LED flash as well. Both cameras can record 1080p video at 30 frames per second, which is pretty good. All right, the processor of the phone. Uh, is a 1.3 gigahertz uh, quad-core CPU. The chipset is actually MediaTek and um, it is the MT6580. Uh, the GPU is a Mali 400 um, in there so those are actually uh, uh, budget uh, phone chipsets but they're plenty sufficient for day-to-day -day, day -day use. The memory is 8 gigabytes, um, and you can expand that by adding an SD card up to 64 gigabytes. The RAM is 1 gigabyte, and the battery on this phone is 2500 milliamp hour. On the wireless side, it supports uh, 802.11 uh, BGNN. Uh, it does not support AC. So it's not the fastest uh, Wi-Fi out there, but you know it, it certainly does the job. Um, it has Bluetooth and GPS as well. On the cellular side, uh, it supports dual SIM. So when you pop open the back, um, you will see uh, a slot for SIM 1 and SIM 2. The SIM 1 could be for your primary SIM. Um, if you travel uh, outside the, the country, you can pop in a second SIM in there for that other country. And you'll have uh, basically two SIMs in there um, for seamless use. Uh, it does not support 4G LTE, however. Uh, it supports 3.5 HSPA+. And um, it is unlocked when you buy this um, for GSM uh, purposes. So you can use this for AT&T, you know, for T-Mobile, um, or for you know, any other GSM-based carrier out there. Uh, and the OS on this device, out of the box, is um, Android 6.0 Marshmallow. 
Okay, so when I uh, powered it on, I didn't need to upgrade the OS on the device. It came that way um, from, from the factory. So this phone, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the price is $100. And you can purchase this uh, from Amazon or from, uh, you know, the various retail stores online. Um, I believe you can buy this at, uh, at Best Buy as well for that price. Okay, so let me talk about uh, my user experience with this phone. Um, I've spent a week using it uh, as my daily driver. And um, my daily driver is usually the ZTE Axon. But I'm no stranger to the budget phones, okay? Um, I have used several of them. Uh, I've used the Moto G, the Moto E, a couple of the low-end Windows phones. Um, so, you know, I know um, the expectations uh, with a budget phone. I know the performance expectations. So I had a feeling uh, what I would expect out of this device and I was basically I was basically right so um, anyways the pros and the cons okay so on the pro side um, the screen is it's nice and bright even outdoors okay all right I had no problems viewing the screen even under direct sunlight so you know, definitely a good screen. Uh, the colors are vibrant. Um, the contrast um, is good. And um, overall, I think the, the screen is, is awesome on this phone. Okay. Uh, as far as the, the, the feel of the phone, you know, once again, this is a budget phone, a hundred dollar phone, and it feels really good in the hand. It feels heavy. It feels like it's made well. Um, the materials feel good when you touch them. Um, the screen is really nice. Uh, there's no creaks. Uh, it doesn't bend. So it feels like a substantial phone when you hold it. So the build quality is excellent on this device. Okay? Um, once again, it, it does run Marshmallow, um, which is really nice and smooth. It's a really smooth OS. And um, even though the specs on this phone are mediocre, the OS, because it's so well optimized, runs really smoothly on, on the phone. Okay, so I didn't really encounter any noticeable, you know, hiccups. So it's pretty smooth, all right? And again, the processor, even though it's a, it's a low-end processor, um, you know, it, it does the job, uh, at least for my, for my needs and purposes, um, I have no complaints. Uh, so for me, uh, the primary uh, requirement for a phone is for communication. So that means email, text messaging. Um, occasionally, I would do you know, the, uh, the video streaming um, Netflix, YouTube, so on and so forth. So, you know, anything I threw at it as far as those things are concerned, I had no issues with it. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that if you do social media on this phone, uh, you won't have any problems. Okay, so the processor is really um, uh, good enough, I would say, um, for the day-to-day -day usage of a smartphone. Okay, about the battery life. So the battery life on this phone is actually excellent um, even though it's only a 2500 milliamp hour battery uh, the combination of having marshmallow as an os with its battery saving features um, you know the uh, the low resolution uh, screen it's not full hd it's only 720p um, and uh, basically the the low end processor as well um, leads to an excellent battery life so as far as battery life is concerned, I can get through a full day with this phone with no problems. Um, and usually at the end of the day, I would have about 30 to 40% battery life left, which is good. 
You will notice two speakers, one down here and one up here, and that is excellent for a budget phone. Normally on a budget phone, you will have one speaker, and they're usually very small, sometimes placed on the back, um, sometimes on the front, but the volume that you get on those speakers is usually very poor. Um, even if you turn up the volume, you know, you can't really um, use it for, let's say, watching a movie, unless you're in a really quiet room. Um, with the speakers on this phone uh, are excellent. Uh, you hear sound coming from both speakers, and when you turn it up, you can actually uh, hear the content that you want to consume, um, even in a semi-loud environment. So thumbs up for the speaker phone or the speakers on this phone. All right, and the the front camera on this phone is actually pretty decent. Um, it actually uh, is a five megapixel, as I mentioned earlier, and it's good for selfies because it has um, a uh, an LED flash. So if you're the type that's into selfies, or if you want to do video chatting, you know, on your phone. Um, the camera on this phone is, is really good for that for those purposes. Let me talk about the cons. Okay, the first on my list is the internal storage. Eight gigabytes. All right, with Marshmallow loaded to this device, after all of the updates, I was left with only 2.5 gigabytes left of storage. Even for me, as you know, I'm not a power user. I don't download a lot of apps. That's not big enough, okay? And, you know, considering, you know, uh, in general, most of the people out there like to download apps, um, and, uh, you know, those would take up space, obviously. You know, plus the, the space that, you know, the, uh, you know the those apps use when you use them um, would you know would add up so what I'm trying to say is 2.5 is really not enough even if you expand the, the memory with a 64 gigabyte card uh, and you use Marshmallow's ability to actually merge the internal and the external storage um, it's still not a, a good solution yes you can install a lot of apps on the SD card after you've done that but a lot of apps like to install into the primary or internal storage and since it's so limited you know you won't be able to install any any more of those apps you know once you've used up that space so the biggest issue for me on this phone is the internal storage I think that even budget phones going forward should at least have 16 gigabytes of storage, okay? Um, what else? Let's see. Okay, so, so the back camera, okay? So the back camera would be your primary shooter, right? And in, in good lighting condition, it's, it's sufficient. I mean, it'll capture, you know, good pictures. Um, and you know, the colors would be, would be vibrant, so on and so forth. So no issue is really when uh, the lighting condition is, is good. But in a, in a poorly lit uh, environment, uh, the pictures are just not good at all. Even with the flash, the flash is weak. Uh, the flash does not have enough, um, uh, what's the word, uh, brightness, I would say. To illuminate the subject uh, that you've taken a picture of, so you know the the, the camera in, in poor lighting conditions, even with the flash, is not very good. And then the one gigabyte of RAM that's in this device, um, at least for me, uh, it was good enough. Um, you know, with what I use a device for, as far as emails, um, text messaging. Um, you know, the, the YouTube, the Netflix, um, you know, music, streaming music, uh, it's plenty sufficient, but 
if you're the type that likes to use a lot of apps in the background, then one gigabyte is not good enough. I think that it's too small. Um, I think that even budget phones these days should come with at least two gigabytes of RAM. Anything below that um, would, would not be enough for general use, I would say, okay? And then lastly, even though the build quality of this phone is excellent, it feels really slippery to hold, all right? There have been many, many occasions where I thought I was going to drop this one because of how slippery it felt in my hand. So my recommendation, if you do get this phone, is to buy a case for it um, so that, you know, that does not happen, okay? Overall, I think this phone is a good phone. Um, you know, there's definitely quite a few pros um, that, uh, you know, I liked about this and uh, some cons that I think um, would be deal breakers, okay? Um, but it's up to you. If, if you're, you know, like me, who's, a, you know, basically a, a light user, I would say, um, this may be good enough. But if you're a power user, and if you're the type of user that likes to download apps and likes to have a lot of apps running in the background, this may not be for you. If you're the type that likes to shoot pictures and likes to, you know, um, render uh, beautiful pictures, then this may not be for you. Okay? Um, I think that's it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you know, feel free to ask or leave um, in the comment section. And um, I hope this video is useful. Uh, you know, in your evaluation of the phone. And thanks for watching.